Okay, on this problem is asked, what continuous interest rate would you need to receive to be better off than receiving a quarterly interest rate of 6%? Okay, we know we got a quarterly interest rate of 6%. To compare these, we need to compare the same amount of money over the same amount of time. So I'm going to compare $1 over one year. Now, you can compare a different amount of money. You compare $2 in both banks for three years or whatever you like. But uh, make sure you use the same amount of money and the, for the same amount of time in both of these banks, one giving quarterly interest rate of 6% and one giving you a continuous interest rate of some amount. So I start off by putting $1 and at 6% compounded quarterly, the NS4, for one year. I did that on the Excel sheet right here, 1, 6%, 4, and 1. And I get this is what you would end up with after one year. Now, what continuous interest rate would I need to receive to give me this value right here? Well, I'm finding a continuous interest rate, so I would be right here in this area. Now, right here, I'm going to want to type equals and then click on this cell right here. And that will put that value in there when I hit enter. And it carries a lot more digits than what's seen. It carries 15 digits of significance there. So this is much better than just typing the number in. And even if you do type the number in, make sure you don't round. Carry all the digits. But again, this is a better way of doing it. The principal was $1 to be equal to what we put in over there for one year. The number E is already in there. Boom. We got a 0 .0595. So about 5.95% would be the answer to that problem. Okay, on this problem, we're asked to solve e to the 3t minus 1 plus 10 equals 15. You could do this by hand by first subtracting the 10 from both sides, get e to the 3t minus 1 equals 5. And now we could write the equation in logarithmic form to say the 3t minus 1, the exponent, equals, since the base is e, will be natural log. I'll put a little uh, capital LN in there, but I'll do that later. Cat, natural log of the 5. Now at this point, natural log of 5 equals 3t minus 1. We could finish it off by hand by adding the 1 and then divide through by the 3 and then get the decimal approximation on any calculator. Take the natural log of 5, add 1 to the answer, and divide that answer by 3. Or at this point, we could solve it on the solver sheet. Let me go ahead and go to the solver sheet. I'll show you how you type that in. Okay, I'm on the solver sheet and it was natural log of 5, so I'll type equals ln of 5, that was ln parentheses 5, and I don't have to say any base on that because when you do ln it knows it's 5. And then on the other side, I need to type in equals 3 times x, we have to use x as the variable and we have to say times in between, minus 1, because the other side of the equation was, I think, 3, 3t minus 1. Then just hit enter, click the solve button, and we get well, it does a lot to get you the graph, too, to show you where it intersects right here, where the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. But here's a solution there of 0.87, and I believe that's the answer to that problem, 0.869 to the nearest hundred is 0.87. Now, we could have also used the um, a solver sheet and typed it in with the EXP format in the original format. We would have typed in on one side equals EXP parentheses 3 times X minus 1 plus 10, and on the other side, equals 15 and solved it. Your answer might be a little bit off from this answer because the logarithmic form is going to give you a better answer to it. Another way to uh, solve this is getting into a topic that we're going to get into now, which is graphing logarithmic uh, equations. Uh, but on this one, we could actually go to the exponential sheet to graph this. So let's go to the ex exponential sheet a second. And so let me go up here to the exponential sheet. And what I'm going to do is look for a sheet that has these features in it, a 3t minus 1. Well, we, we probably have to take something to the other side, maybe, but an e to some power, messy power. And let's see, I think, think there's something set up for us to do this. We move over here. I'm looking for e raised to, see, that won't quite do it, even though that's close to it on the top. We have 3t minus 1 with a base of e, and, well, that would... We actually could do it right here, and we could just use the A as being E. We could do equals EXP of 1. That allows me to put E in as the base. And then the B on this problem was, let's see, 3 and then a minus 1. 
3 and a minus 1, and the D, the constant at the end, was 10. And let's see, I think we were asking when will this equal 15. So we'll put 15 in for the Y value down here. And if I do, I get the same answer, 0.869. And if you wanted to use this sheet, we could have. Then the A would have been 1. The E is already known to be in there, see, on that. Uh, the B was, uh, let's see, I think it was 3. And the C was minus 1. And the D was uh, 10. And then we could go down here and put in the 15 for the Y value. And we get the same answer. So... So that works good. There's lots of ways of answering that problem there. Um, let's go back to it here and finish up with the graphs of logarithmic equations. And we already looked at graphs of some logarithmic equations. Uh, they're just the opposite of exponential equations. They have a vertical asymptote, and then they grow slowly. They don't uh, have like a horizontal asymptote. They keep on going up. And um, you can find the location of the vertical asymptote by setting whatever is in the parentheses, which are taking the log of equal to zero. So in, in case like this, like the log of CX plus D, you set the CX plus D equal to zero. That means you take the D to the other side, you get CX equals negative D, then divide through by the C and you get X equals negative D over C. So for example, let's take a look at one of the... Okay, I went to the logarithmic sheet and I scrolled to the right and you have one area here to the right. There's only two graphs on that sheet. And if I scroll to the right, you get this area where you can graph any logarithmic form. So uh, if I want to graph, let's say, y equals log. So the assumed number in front of here is 1. Log of, let's say, let's do natural log. If I do natural log, then the base is assumed to be e. Now, I actually have it programmed in here that you could type in e for the number e. But really, the best way to do that is type in equals exp of 1. And that will put that number E in there for you. And this would be natural log of 3x plus 4, close parentheses, minus 5. Well, to find the, uh, the shift, the horizontal shift on this, where the, where the vertical asymptote has been shifted right or left, set that uh, what's in the parentheses here, which you're taking the natural log of, which is 3x plus 4 equal to 0. You set 3x plus 4 equals 0, you get 3x equals negative 4, and then divide through by 3, and you get negative 4 thirds. And negative 4 thirds is the same as negative 1 third. So if we would look at this graph, there's actually a vertical asymptote at negative 1 uh, and negative 1 and a third, or negative 4 thirds. Uh, let me go farther to the left here so we can maybe see this. Let's see. Yeah, I'm having a hard time being able to adjust the viewing window so that you can see that it goes farther to the left. And that's probably a, a setup on this. But um, it it does shift it to, let's do one where it shifts it to the right. Let's do uh, make this negative 4 here. And now what that should do is shift it uh, to the opposite direction, shift it to the right. And I think it's because my end is out there so far. That's why I can't see it. Let's just go out here to 10. And now we can see it. Okay. And where's the vertical asymptote? Well, it's over here a little bit. I tell you what, we don't even know. We need to go clear to, to 10. This is basically the vertical asymptote right here. And where is it? Somewhere between 0 and 5. Let's just go from 0 to 2 so we can see this bit of this graph right here. So it's at 1 and what? 1 and 1 1.3 repeating 4 thirds. And now I think I can do that other one where we had 4 in here. And now let's back it up and see the graph back at like negative 2 or so. And we can see that there was a vertical asymptote right here at uh, negative 4 thirds. Now, logarithms aren't defined. Like if you, reason is because log of 0 is where you get a vertical asymptote. It's not defined. And then negative numbers, if we end up having taking the log of a negative number, that's not defined either. So that's why it flatlines here. That's what Excel does when it doesn't know what to do at flatlines. So that's where the graph looks like. And there's a vertical asymptote right there. And basically, that's what you need to know about these uh, type of graphs.